Today is January 6th, and this is the audience of six. Good afternoon. My name is Tiffany Custodio, and today I would like to talk to you about donating blood. Imagine a close relative. It can be a brother, father, sister, or nephew. They were just in a car accident. They made it through the accident but are being rushed to the hospital because they were badly injured and are losing blood quickly. In order for them to recover from these injuries, they're going to need a blood transfusion. Although this is not an easy image to think of, it is one that is constantly happening that many of us may have lived through already. This image illustrates one of the many different cases in which a patient might need a blood transfusion. This is why today I would like to take the time to encourage you to go out there and become blood donors. Through donating blood, you can help out a variety of different people. This can include trauma patients, surgery patients, anemic people, premature babies, and cancer patients. In the United States, every two seconds, there is a patient in need of blood. In one year, 30 million different components of blood are being used. Out of these components of blood, only 16 million are coming from donation. There's a constant low blood supply in the US. Many of us believe that there are other people out there that are donating and taking care of the job for us. This can't be further from the truth. Only a small group of people is eligible to donate blood in the first place. People are required to have good health in order to donate. This limits the pool of, of people that the blood can be donated from. On top of this natural limitation, people's reluctance to donate is being added. I understand that as humans, getting involved in a new process can be difficult. Not knowing what to expect may have kept you from donating blood. Here are a few facts that hopefully will get you more familiarized and at ease with the process. First of all, donation is a safe process. Every person is checked to make sure that they are eligible in the first place, and a sterile needle is used once for every donor, then discarded off property. The donation process consists of four parts. The first is registration. This is where a person's personal info is taken down. This information is kept confidential and will not be released without your permission. The second step is the medical history. This, like I said, is before, like I said before, is to check that you are capable of donating blood without it being harmful for your own health. The third step is the actual donation. This step doesn't take any longer than 10 minutes. The fourth step is the refreshments. The medical staff will supply you with a snack and a small drink in order for you to have your energy up and keep your body from feeling weak. Overall, the blood donation process is pretty short and it will not affect any of your daily routine. This means that any one of us can take part in it. There are many misconceptions and myths about the blood donation process. Through research and own personal experience, I've been able to find many of these misconceptions to be incorrect. I used to think before donating my, for my first time that the process was going to be painful. I soon realized that this was incorrect. Giving blood is no worse than getting a vaccine. Other than for the initial first pinch, there's no pain and if blood makes you queasy, you can simply just look away. Another big misconception is that health factors such as allergies, blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, and anemia can keep you from donating blood. This isn't true. In most of these cases, you're still capable of donating blood. It is best to consult with your doctor and find out about your special circumstance instead of just coming into conclusions. A lot of people use age restrictions as a way to keep them from donating blood. In most states, someone as young as 16 years old can donate blood with the consent of a parent, and there are no upper, late, upper age restrictions. This means that most of us are within the range to donate blood. The last big misconception about donating is that it's going to take a long time. 
In most cases, it doesn't take over an hour. A uh, person can donate every 56 days, so one hour out of that many days is really not much to ask for. Uh, most of us spend time watching TV or on the internet on a daily basis. There are benefits for donating blood. Every whole blood donation is split into three parts, plasma, platelets, and blood cells. What this means is that for every pint of blood that is received, you are able to save three lives. On top of saving lives, a donor is also getting a free mini physical. This can allow you to know about any small condition that you weren't aware of before, such as having high blood pressure. In conclusion, there's a great need for blood donations. We never know when the person close to us, like a family member, friend, or even ourselves, will need blood. In all those cases, we would all, have, we would all expect the blood to be there for us. But the truth is, none of us are going out there and donating right now. Once again, I want to urge you to go out there and become a blood donor. And even if you can't donate yourself because of your own circumstance, you should, be able, uh, you should encourage the people around you to donate. Thank you for listening to my speech. And now we'll have a question and answer session. Um, is it true that you can't donate blood if you have tattoos? Uh, this is actually one of the other misconceptions. You're still, most, in most cases, if you have a tattoo, you still can donate. Usually, it'll take you about a year from getting the tattoo to be able to be safe. But in, there's sometimes where as long as the tattoo has scarred over, you're okay to donate. And another big thing is, if you didn't get the tattoo from a place that has been licensed by the state, you won't be able to donate. But if it has been licensed, you usually are able to. Where or in what locations can I donate blood? Uh, there's many different locations. Usually they'll set up blood drives around the cities, and that's usually posted on websites. Also, if you go to college, which I know most of the people here do, uh, colleges usually hold blood drives, so you can just show up and they'll do the whole process there. Uh, there's also clinics and at the doctor, too. Any other questions? You talk about you will receive refreshments after donating the blood to keep your energy up. Mm -hmm. What about, do you have to do something prior to the donation to get ready? Uh, usually what you want to do before the donation is have a big meal. That's mostly all that preparation takes. It's not something that you have to prepare for like a day before or a week before. Just having a hearty meal, just making sure once again to keep your energy up. But that's the big thing. You never want to donate blood on an empty stomach. Any other questions? Well, you went over the benefits of donating blood. What are um, the side effects? What happens after? Um, there's no really big side effects. Once again, that's why they do the whole medical um, inspection of your history. Because if you, if you are healthy, donating blood shouldn't affect your health. Uh, one thing can be is just feeling weak throughout the day. But usually if you eat something and have a refreshment, your body will be able to recover. Um, if you do have any side effects, it's usually uh, good for you to go and see a doctor about it right away. But it's nothing big. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for listening to my speech once again. <laughs>